The name Antonio Caso sent chills down the spine of anyone who heard it. And why wouldn't they be scared? This man was notorious for ordering the death of over 100 people before his arrest. Keep watching this video to learn about Antonio Caso, a mafia underboss once referred to as the most ruthless mafia leader. Antonio was noted for one thing, he hated snitches and informants, and this hate pushed him to kill anyone that dared speak to the police or even anyone he suspected was speaking to the police. But towards the end of his life, Antonio would become that which he hated his whole life, an informant. But why would a mob boss suddenly decide to help the police? In this video, we will take a look at the life of Antonio Caso, his life of crime, and how he ended up working for the government. Let's get to it. Antonio was born in 1942 in South Brooklyn and grew up on Union Street where he notoriously shot birds with a rifle. Even though his father was known for burglaries in the 1940s, he tried his best to dissuade his son from the mob life. In fact, his father worked as a longshoreman and hoped that one day Antonio would also find a well-paying, honest job and lead a quiet life. But Antonio wanted none of that. He had his eyes set on a mob lifestyle. A lifestyle where he could kill anyone he wanted, for whatever reason. He started by joining small South Brooklyn gangs and even leading at some point, before he was eventually poached by the Lucchese crime family at the age of 21. Interestingly, he was known as Gaspipe in this crime family, naming himself after his father's favorite weapon. Antonio's first role for the crime family was a loan shark. All he had to do was visit loan defaulters and threaten them to pay back the Lucchese family. Once, while on his daily duty, Antonio heard a dock worker boast about how good his new boots were. This got him excited, and in a bid to test how good they actually were, he dropped over 500 pounds of cargo on the dock worker's feet. Of course, the boot gave way and the worker broke most of his toes. Between the years of 1965 and 1977, Antonio was arrested multiple times, his crimes ranging from illegal arms possession to drug trafficking, physical assault, and many more. But every single time, he walked away from the police station a free man because every witness was too scared to testify against him. As expected, the Lucchese crime family recognized Antonio's thirst for blood, and it didn't take long before he rose through the ranks. In 1979, he was already a major figure in the family alongside Vittorio Amuso, another dreaded Mafia member. And this was how Antonio Caso's illustrious career as a Mafia member began. With Vittorio, Antonio made millions of dollars extorting truck companies, contractors, trafficking narcotics, and orchestrating burglaries. By the end of the 80s, these two men, alongside members of another gang named the 19th Hole Crew, had made about $100 million. Despite how successful these crime rings had become, Antonio was not satisfied. He had his eyes on something bigger than Vittorio, a shot at the crown a shot at being the leader of the Lucchese family. Fortunately for him, his opportunity came in 1985, when John Gotti, the captain of the Gambino crime family, killed Paul Castellano in a coup that wasn't approved by the big shots. This angered the Lucchese family's boss, Anthony Corallo, who then hired Antonio Caso for revenge. Unfortunately, Caso's plan to kill John Gotti failed, but he managed to kill Frank De Ciccio, his right-hand man. Almost at the same time, Corello was sentenced to 100 years in prison after being accused of racketeering the previous year. With Corello gone, Caso became the consigliere of the Lucchese family, and here began a killing spree that would last for several months. If Caso suspected that a member of the family was an informant or snitch, he immediately killed them offering no chances for explanations. Before he became the underboss in 1990, Caso had already killed eight people he suspected of being informants. In 1991, the tally had risen up to 17, and before his eventual arrest in 1993, the total figure had risen to over 100 kills. In fact, in 1992, Caso tried to kill a federal prosecutor and then a federal judge the following year. On the 19th of January, 1993, Caso was finally arrested just as he walked out of the shower. 
He was found guilty of 72 criminal counts, which included murder, tax evasion, extortion, bribery, and many more. He was eventually sentenced to 455 years in prison. But Castle wasn't one to go down without a fight. He began ratting out NYPD officers he had worked with in the past, rival gang members, eventually earning a spot in the witness protection program. At this point, Casso knew he had become that which he hated the most, an informant. In 2009, after several years in prison, Casso was diagnosed with prostate cancer, and in 2020, he contracted the coronavirus. By this time, the former mob boss was already in a wheelchair and suffered extreme pain in his lungs. On the 15th of December 2020, Antonio Casso died on a ventilator, leaving his legacy of crime as the only thing the world remembers him by. Do you think Antonio Casso felt proud of his actions before he died? Or right before he breathed his last breath, he regretted everything he had done? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section. Thanks for watching.